yo what's up so about a week ago i bought the new 16 inch macbook pro after using the 2018 15 inch intel macbook pro with the touch bar for the past three years before I made my decision to go with the 16 inch instead of the 14 inch though, I watched just about every video on YouTube there is on this topic without actually coming to any kind of final conclusion. I love YouTube and I probably spent way too much time on this platform, but especially in the realms of the tech YouTube world, I often get the feeling that a lot of tech reviewers are kind of detached from the reality of most people and that often leads to them not talking about the stuff that I would actually be interested in. So this video then is pretty much just my attempt at throwing my head into the ring in order to maybe help you answer the question of whether you should go with the 14 or the 16 inch model for yourself. For me, a week has now gone by since I bought my 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro and was the 16 inch the right decision? Should I have gone for the 14 inch instead or maybe something else entirely? Let's talk about it. So as I said earlier, I've been using the 15.4 inch MacBook Pro for the past few years and just look at it. I know from a functionality standpoint, this was a very flawed design, but aside from the slightly too thick bezels, I think it actually is still very attractive. And if you put these two machines side by side, I would guess that most people who are not that tech savvy would probably think that the old one is not only more attractive, but also the more modern and more recently released machine. Actually, when you put the last three MacBook Pro generations side by side, the M1 Pro 16 inch really looks like it's the oldest, not the newest generation. The thin bezels and the high quality screen in general are really the only giveaways when you look at it. Now, before you get me wrong here, while I do love the design of the old Intel MacBook Pros, just because of the functionality, I would prefer having the new M1 Pro or M1 Max MacBook Pros over the Intel MacBook Pros any day of the week. No question about it. So maybe let's just talk functionality first. This new 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro is silent. It is ridiculously fast. The screen is outstanding. The speakers are insane. The battery performance is beyond anything that I've ever experienced. And it has all the parts that I've been missing for so long. It is, however, a very expensive machine. I mean, it starts at 2,750 euros here in Germany, which is roughly the equivalent of 3,140 US dollars. And that is for the base model. But with that being said, from what I've seen so far, the new line of MacBook Pros is just outstanding in terms of performance and functionality. And also the new design language clearly shows that Apple wanted to emphasize that they were no longer going to prioritize form over functionality in their more professionally oriented devices. So let's get back to the question of, is this too big? And maybe even on a more broader scale, is it worth it? Is it worth the money, but also is it worth the hassle? And that's where it gets more complicated in my opinion. There are some obvious cases though, so let's just get them out of the way first. If you need all the power in the world and the biggest screen you can get for whatever it is that you do, you should obviously go for the 16 inch, no brainer. If on the other hand, you don't need the performance at all and you think that 16 inch is just way too big to begin with, you should probably not even go with the 14 inch, just take a closer look at the M1 MacBook Air or the M1 MacBook Pro and you're good to go. Lastly, you might fall into a weird category where you do need the power, but you also need the portability. Maybe you work a lot in cramped spaces, but also you do have a home office where you have the MacBook plugged into your monitor for the majority of the time. Then you might actually care a lot about the form factor for those times when you are on the go. And if you fall into this category, you might actually want to take a closer look at the 14 inch MacBook Pro. However, that is pretty much the gist of what most YouTubers had to say on the subject. But if you ask me, that leaves a huge amount of people out of the picture. Namely, those working professionals who need a bigger screen but not the performance and those enthusiasts who like to have the bigger screen and the performance but who actually don't need either of the two. So first of all, who do I mean by working professionals who need a bigger screen, but not the performance? Well, actually pretty much every white collar job you can think of. Take me for instance, I work as a lawyer and like with most white collar jobs, we use 13 inch ultrabook types of notebooks at my firm. In the past, that small 13 inch screen 
has never been an issue because while I was at work, I've always had my notebook plugged into one or two monitors anyways and just used them. But with the recent massive wave of mobile working concepts that has swept the world, especially during the height of the COVID lockdowns, more and more people are starting to work from places outside of their regular offices for multiple days a week. And that obviously means that more and more people now are relying on the screens on their mobile device instead of plugging it in in their offices all the time. I actually specialize in labor law and among other things I do consult big corporations, especially in the pharmaceutical industry, on how they can implement mobile working concepts within the German legal framework. And I would not be surprised at all if going forward there was a massive increase in 15 or 16 inch devices that run very silently, very dependable and offer great battery life. That is in part because working on these smaller 13 inch screens all day, multiple days a week can lead to serious health consequences over the long run. But aside from that, having more screen real estate simply also allows for a way more efficient workflow. Let me put it to you this way. You don't need a lot of processing performance to put two documents side by side on the screen at the same time, but you really do need that screen real estate. And the same is pretty much true if you're talking about having a Zoom call and a note taking app open at the same time, or maybe a document and a research tab in your browser. Whatever it is for all of those applications, you really do want that bigger screen. As for the other category that I mentioned earlier, those enthusiasts that maybe enjoy having the bigger screen and the performance, but actually don't need either of the two, well, for them, it's pretty much down to personal preference. I actually do have a foot in that camp as well, since I do make some money off of this YouTube channel, but it's obviously not my main source of income by a long shot. So I very much appreciate the fact that this new MacBook Pro can apparently edit 6K raw footage or whatever, and that obviously makes it more future-proof for me. But at the same time, to be completely honest, currently, I don't need that kind of power. And if there was an option like a 15-inch MacBook Air that maybe used the regular M1 or maybe the M2 chip or whatever, that would have been more than sufficient for me and for my use cases. But alas, it isn't, and that's kind of what's frustrating me. So obviously, I think that Apple should definitely make something like a 15-inch MacBook Air with a very slim profile, very efficient, yet fast enough for most things chip like the M1 or the M2. And because of the efficiency of those chips, it would probably still maintain a very good battery life. That machine would be more than enough for most people who could use this for their day job or university or whatever. And the performance would still be plenty enough for the occasional Lightroom edit or Final Cut project. Also, if Apple would offer something like this and obviously go for the cheaper chips, it would in turn allow them to reduce the asking price significantly but whatever, that thing simply doesn't exist. So if you're trying to decide between Apple's current offerings of the 14-inch or the 16-inch MacBook Pro, here are my two cents if you fall into either of the categories that I mentioned earlier. First of all, please don't make price a deciding factor here. While there is actually a 500 euro or dollar or whatever, difference between the 14 inch and the 16 inch base models, that difference reduces down to only about 200 bucks as soon as you spec up the baseline 14 inch MacBook Pro to the same processor as the baseline 16 inch MacBook Pro. So please don't go for the smaller screen just because you wanted to save those couple of hundreds of bucks if what you really actually wanted is a bigger screen because that only leads to BIOS remorse and that's something that you seriously do not want if you spend that kind of money on a MacBook. With that being said, if up until now you've been using the 13 inch MacBook Pro and you've never felt like it was too small, the 14 inch is obviously the way to go for you. If however you are currently using a 15 or a 16 inch model and you're thinking about sizing down to the 14 inch, I would highly urge you to go to your next Apple store and take a look at them in person. As I said earlier, I've been using the 15 inch MacBook Pro with the touch bar up until recently and that obviously sits bang in the middle between the 14 inch and the 16 inch version in terms of screen size. But even though that is the case, when I saw them in the store, the 14 inch felt way too small and I felt right at home with the 16 inch. Now, a week later, I can say that I've been using this new MacBook Pro a ton and not once have I thought to myself, that I would actually prefer to have the smaller one instead of the one that I've got. So yes, sure, I guess, hypothetically speaking, there might be situations in which this thing would actually be too big, like when you're sitting on an airplane or whatever, 
but I don't know about you. Even without COVID, I simply don't fly that often. But if I do, I never actually have a need to use my MacBook in flight. For onboard entertainment, I have my 11 inch iPad Pro and that's it. Also, regarding the weight of the new 16-inch MacBook Pro, I've seen many YouTubers talk about how heavy and big this guy is, and well, yes, it is certainly bigger and heavier than my last 15-inch MacBook Pro, but if we just go one generation further back to the old silver 15-inch MacBook Pros, they are pretty much on par. Yes, the new 16-inch looks a bit thicker, but that's mostly due to the sleeker design on the old models and not because of actual thickness. And in terms of weight, they are pretty much on par. So in summary, if you want the power of the new M1 Pro or M1 Max MacBook Pros and you're currently using a 15 or a 16 inch MacBook Pro, I would highly urge you to go for the 16 inch model unless that bigger size has gotten in the way for you in the past on a regular basis. Simply because even though there is an increase in size and weight over the last generation, I don't think it is that noticeable at all. And if you're using an older generation of the MacBook Pro, you probably won't notice any difference at all. But before I wrap this video up, one last note, if you're only looking for the bigger screen and you don't actually want the power, obviously a 15 inch MacBook Air is not available right now, but what is available is a ton of 15 and 16 inch Intel MacBook Pros on the second hand market right now. If I wouldn't be using the MacBook Pro for video editing on a regular basis, for which my last baseline 15 inch MacBook Pro was severely underpowered since I made the jump to 4K, 10 bit, 60 FPS, H.265 footage, I could have easily stayed on the previous generation. I think the old Intel MacBooks looked better, they were lighter, and if you only use them for stuff like writing documents, browsing the web, and consuming content, they are also completely silent and have very decent battery life. So again, if you want the bigger screen, but not the performance, save your money and just get an old Intel MacBook Pro instead. But anyway, that's all I got for you today. I hope it helped some of you. Let me know which way you went with your own purchasing decision or maybe which way you are planning to go. Also, are you with me on the whole 15 inch MacBook Air thing or am I just out on my own here? Thanks for watching, maybe consider subscribing if you would like to see more videos about cameras, tech, EDC and all that good stuff. Until next time, take care, bye bye.